Text animators are a great easy alternative to manually keyframing your layers, and they offer much more flexibility. So let me show you how they work. So in After Effects, I've got this really simple scene with just some text and a background. And we want to first add the text animator. So what we need to do is press the drop down arrow on our text. And you'll notice this animate button here. And we're going to select, uh, we're going to click the arrow. And I'm just going to select position. Now, all of these are just general properties that you can otherwise animate that you'll probably not need me to talk about. So I'm just going to press position. And you'll notice we get an animator one and a range selector one pop up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter this position and you'll notice our text moves with it. So if I bring this Y down to 250 and press play, you'll notice nothing happens. And that's because we've got no keyframes. Nothing's animated. We're not telling After Effects we want it to do anything. So all we need to do is go to our range selector one and press the drop down. And then we have these three buttons here. And I'm going to explain what each one does. So the start and end is these two red lines here it's the start and end of the range that we want to select essentially so at the minute if i set that to 50 only half of our text would animate when i then animate this so you could use that in certain instances if you wanted to but most of the time i just leave these as zero and a hundred now where we do the animation is on the offset you're essentially piping the offset through the text so if i set this to zero and then i move forward to one second and bring this to 100 you'll notice we now have an animation and it's not the greatest looking but we can ease that on the end by selecting it and pressing f9 and you've got your first basic kind of text animation using a text selector so we can obviously take this a lot further and you'll notice we have this advanced tab here. So I'm going to press down on this and we get a bunch more options. Now I'm going to go through what these do and how to make your text look much nicer. So we can base this on percentage or its index. So in this case, it'll go between zero and six. Most of the time, I just leave this on percentage as it's much easier to use in my opinion. Um, we can also change the mode it's based on. So in a minute, you'll notice each character is animating, which if we were doing this by hand, it would take much longer. We'd either have to separate the layers and kind of mask them all out, and it'd take a little while. So the range selector is much more beneficial. But we can change this super fast to say the client's come back and said, actually, I want it to animate all together. We can change this to words, so it'll go word by word instead. Or we can change this to lines. So if I add in some more text here and add in another line, you'll notice we then have the first one followed by the second one. Now you'll notice here we have uh, the shape as well of our range selector and this is where pretty much the, the majority of the change will kind of happen. Now the minute it's set to square which essentially means if I draw this out we have a square just running itself through this text so as this kind of comes over to the O the M will then sort of animate up and as we get over to the O, the O will animate up and so on. Now we can change this and make it look a lot nicer. So what I'm going to do, you can change this to ramp up. So this will go from the first letter down to the last and you'll notice a linear gradient. Ramp down will do the opposite. So instead of going up this time, we'll go down and it does the opposite. And you can change it to triangle, which creates this triangle effect and runs a triangle through it rather than a square round which will run a circle through it and smooth which kind of tries to do its best of creating a smooth motion between it all now i'm just going to leave this as ramp up as that's probably the one that i find myself using on a daily basis and uh, we can ease this using the ease high and ease low now bear in mind if we do the values on the ramp up it will then be the opposite on the ramp down so when we're on the ramp up the ease high is your ease in I'm just going to set that to 50 and the ease low is your ease out and I'm going to set that to 80 and you'll notice we get a much nicer effect but we now because we're using the ramp up it's not starting where we want it to start it's not starting at this 250 pixels below its original position so what we need to do is change this offset to minus 100 and I'm not sure why it works like this I never got my head around it so I can't answer that question uh, but now when we use the ramp up and ramp down we just have to kind of set it to minus 100 and 100 you just get used to doing that I'm not sure why it's that way so now if I play this we get a nice smooth motion 
Now we can obviously add more properties to this as well. So if I go to the add and add an opacity and then change my opacity to zero, we'll now have this fade up and position up. And as you can see, it is way faster to animate than doing this by hand and doing this manually. And this is the benefit of using uh, type animators. Now you'll notice we also have the randomize order here. So what this will do is just randomly select the um, text to come up each way, however it wants. And obviously you can change this seed. Um, so you can, if you don't like the original one, you can just change that. And then you get this kind of nice random motion. And again, if you were doing this by hand, it'd be much more inconvenient. Now we can actually turn this text into 3D text, similar to if we were to activate the 3D on the text here, we can sort of position it and move it around. Uh, however, this is all based on the layer itself. What we can do is go into our range selector and actually do it on a per character basis. So on your range selector, you can go to add property and enable per character 3D. This then gives us the flexibility of creating Z depth if we wanted to. Or the way I would personally use it is I just take the position off and take the opacity back to 100 and then add in a rotation property. Uh, we now get the three axes. And what I'm going to do is just change my X to 90. And now we get this flip up text, which is quite cool. And obviously, uh, it's just different ways you can animate the text, but it makes it so much faster and so much more convenient than having to do this by hand. Now we can actually start stacking these text animators as well. So I've got my basic positional movement here. And what we can do is duplicate this up. So I'm going to select my animator one and just press Control and D and this will create animator two. Now it's doing the exact same thing. Uh, so it's just duplicating what it's done. So now it goes to a minus 500 position. What we can do is if I go down to my range selector here and open the advanced is I want to offset these keyframes. So I'm going to select them both and hold Alt on my keyboard or Option if you're on Mac and press on my right arrow twice. This will move the keyframes forward uh, to keyframes. Now what we get is a slight offset, but there's still really not much changed. What I want to do here is change this position to minus 250. And you'll notice we kind of get a little wave happening now, which is pretty cool. And you kind of get this wave going through the text, but I, it's not really what I want. These two range selectors are contradicting themselves. So I'm going to change this shape and I'm going to change it to smooth. So now it's going to have this ramp up and then it's going to fly past and kind of drop back down. And obviously we can play the easing on this and kind of do it how we want. Maybe we don't want to ease into the movement and only ease out of it. And obviously you can play around with this as much as you like. There's no limitations with this. It's kind of just to your own devices and playing until you get a feel for what you want. On top of range selectors, we can add something called uh, wiggly selectors and expression selectors. So if we click our add button here on our animator one, I can go to selector and then you'll notice we can add another range selector, which is just what we've got, a wiggly or an expression. Now an expression is just to add expressions in and we also have this wiggly one. Now this wiggly is essentially like applying a wiggle expression uh, to your text. So what it's doing right now is taking this 250 pixels in the Y and it's going to randomly wiggle in that range. So at the minute it's going to do two wiggles a second uh, between a value of zero and 250 on the Y. And this is only while this animates. So as soon as this offset comes to 100, uh, it's going to stop and return to normal. Now what we can do is some really cool stuff with this. Now we can obviously change the wiggles a second and make it really crazy and have some really weird wobble. I, I don't know who would want that, but maybe you want that. And we can also set it to zero as well. And then we get some variation in the movement. Now, the good thing about this is we can change this temporal phase and spatial phase. So if I adjust these values, we can create a really kind of random pattern and adjust them slightly to change the kind of range of this wiggle. Maybe I want to improve that position a bit as well. So we have text kind of coming up from the top and text coming from the bottom, and it gives us this really random effect. And then we get some nice movement. Now, you could mask that off so it kind of looks like your text is just coming in from the center. 
or maybe you don't want that and maybe you just want some really crazy wiggles uh, whatever you fancy the option is there just treat it as adding a wiggle to your overall text positions if you want to see more after effects tutorials you can watch this video here thank you so much and i'll see you next time